Let's bring in Linda Lacasse, the former neighbor of Tara Reid, who's accused Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden of sexual assault. Tara Reid accused him in 1993. We just played the clip of Tara describing what happened. Um, uh, Linda Lacasse came forward um, in uh, uh, just recently uh, in the Business Insider piece and has corroborated Tara Reid's account. Linda, this is your first time speaking on television about this. Can you tell us what happened in the mid-1990s? How did you know Tara? And then tell us what she told you and why you're coming forward today. Well, Tara was my uh, next-door neighbor. I moved uh, into the apartment uh, right next to her. And uh, we became close at that time. And um, we actually, she told me about it when we were having a conversation. And um, so, you know, as Rich uh, put forth in, in the article in the Business Insider, she, you know, I was having a moment outside, I was outside and I had just um, received some papers. And I was upset about them, and uh, she came over, and um, we were talking about um, about violence, because I had experienced violence myself. And um, she started telling me about Joe Biden and what he had done. And basically, she told me that he put his um, he put her up against a wall, and. He um, put his hand up his, her skirt, and he put his fingers inside her. And she was very distraught, and she was very upset, and she was crying. And that's how that conversation happened. We were just sitting on my front stoop in front of my apartment. And what year was this that you had that conversation? Well, it was either uh, 1994 or very early, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, 1995 or early 1996. And Linda, um, if you could um, talk about your response at the time, she told you, did she tell you it was Senator Biden who she had worked for? She did. She did tell me that. And, you know, I really didn't pay that much attention at the time. I didn't really care much about politics. I didn't. Um, I knew she worked for him. I didn't know really who he was much. I didn't put that much importance on it. So, oops. So, but can you talk about why you've decided to come forward now? I understand you're a Biden supporter. Is that right? That's correct. I'm a strong lifelong Democrat, and I am a Biden supporter. And, um, you know, she, I didn't know about, I didn't know about all the stuff that was going on in the news. Uh, she told me about it last month. Um, she called me, and she told me that she had decided to come forward with it, and, um, and I said, and she told me about the allegations, and I said, oh, yes, I remember that. So um, then she, we talked again a little over a week ago, and I volunteered to come forward. And again, you know, I worked so much, I hadn't really had time to, to um, pay as much attention as I could have. And, but I did volunteer to come forward. And the reason I volunteered to come forward is just I, I feel that the truth needs to be told, and her truth needs to be told. I believed her back then when she told me, um, and I believe her now. And just talk about how you mesh believing her now, that she was sexually assaulted um, by her boss, by Senator Joe Biden. That's her allegation. Um, if you believe her, why you support him? Um, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. Um, I've, I've always supported him. And 
um, I just have to keep supporting him now. Um, and it's a little bit harder now after this allegation. Um, I'm a definite anti-Trumper. <laughs> so, um, so I'm having a little bit of a hard time with it. <laughs> so, but <laughs> mostly it's an anti-Trump thing. And, and, you know, he went on, I saw him on um, Morning Joe this morning, and he looks very believable, too. But I'm hearing this today, and I heard Tara a long time ago telling me that. So, so I, I'm struggling with it, <laughs> with the with with the, the election now. Well, let me. But I'm not. I'm gonna, still going to vote for him. Let me bring back in Rich McHugh. Um, your thoughts on how the media has covered this story? I mean, ultimately, The New York Times did a piece, New York Magazine, Rebecca Tracer did a piece. Uh, of course, MSNBC is now interviewing Joe Biden today. Um, you've had a lot of experience with NBC in trying to bring out the Harvey Weinstein story first on NBC mm -hmm. with, um, with Ronan Farrow. But talk about the progression of this piece. I think the media was afraid. Um, I'll just say afraid because you know there, there are things in Tara's story, there are some inconsistencies. There's her writings about Russia and whatnot that that give journalists, myself included, some pause uh, in reporting this. But which, when you're at a network level, you weigh those things um, even more carefully when the, the allegations are against a you know presumptive Democratic nominee. Um, that said, um, I'm a little surprised at the at the the fact that the lack of coverage after more voices, corroborating voices, came forward. Um, even after Linda came forward, talk about um, who else, uh, Rich. Well, so right now uh, on the record is so at the time Tara said she told her mother, who has since deceased in 2016. So we can't hear from her, but we did just hear from her on Larry King. She didn't name Biden, but she did say things that, that, that make sense according to Tara's story. And Tara did tell us about this before it was unearthed. So we were looking for it. Um, she said she told a friend at the time con contemporaneously. I've spoken to that friend um, a lot and interviewed her. And um, she's her story lines up exactly. I, I find no inconsistencies with that story. Her brother, Colin Moulton, has gone on the record with, with me and Business Insider and, and others and confirmed parts of her story. He says he was a younger brother by seven years, so he don't doesn't think he was told the full story because he was a younger brother. But uh, he was definitely remembers being told that, you know, Joe Biden had his hand up her inside her clothes or up her clothes. Uh, Linda, who we're hearing from now, and uh, Lorraine Sanchez, who also went on the record, she works. She worked with Tara from '94 through '96, and Senator Jack O'Connell's office in California, and says at the time that, that Tara arrived there, she was was complaining about having uh, uh, experienced sexual harassment at the hands of her former boss in D.C. I asked Tara, I said, "Did you experience sexual harassment from anybody else in D.C.? Do you have any other allegation?" She said, "No, I only worked for for I only experienced it in in the Biden office at the hands of Joe Biden." So, you have a number of voices right there that that that, and there there are other people too. By the way, there's there, I, I spoke with an intern who worked under Tara uh, in the Biden office, and she says she doesn't remember Tara saying anything about sexual harassment or about sexual assault. But what she does confirm is that Tara was um, all of a sudden in mid April 1993. Tara was replaced, and she was no longer her supervisor. I want to. She found odd. I want to put President Trump on, who was questioned about whether he thought Joe Biden should respond to the allegations. I don't know anything about it. I, I don't know uh, exactly. I think he should respond. You know, it's uh, it could be false accusations. I know all about false accusations. So I've been falsely charged numerous times. So that was President Trump, who has himself been accused of rape and sexual assault repeatedly by dozens of women. Rich McHugh. It's a complicated conversation, no doubt about it. This is uh, both of these, both of both Trump and Biden now 
are, uh, you know, credibly accused. And um, we're we're talking about this allegation right now because and, uh, it's Joe Biden. But and, both both need to be discussed. And Linda Lacasse, Linda Lacasse, do you feel strongly that Tara Reid should be believed? Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe her 100 percent. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us. Um, Linda Lacasse has come forward, uh, uh, who corroborates Tara Reid's story, says she told her about it in the mid-1990s. And I want to thank Rich McHugh, um, who wrote this piece in The Business Insider. We will link to that. He's an investigative reporter, former NBC News producer, worked with Ronan Farrow on the story of Harvey Weinstein.